interesting. We have been in this this field for quite some time too. We are doing this for 10 years mm -hmm. also. Um, developing tools to do participatory projects mm -hmm. and um, just from studying the, the online um, issues and publications I think uh, I experienced many of the issues you already solved or, or are also in the process of solving. Yeah? Um, one issue that um, if I may ask questions. Yeah? Um, of course. Yes, one issue that, that is interesting is, um, is there a, now a mode how you integrate these participatory processes into decision making in the political system? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is this a standardized way or is it a case by case approach? What to there is, of course, the national referendum which uh, holds exactly the same level as a law and it binds the parliament uh, for at least two years uh, and we hold such a referendum uh, every two years. So each successive referendum may overturn uh, the decisions made uh, by the previous referendum because it happens every couple of years. So that's the highest binding power. There's various other systems of direct participation that are less binding, but for referendum, it, anything that's you know uh, not unconstitutional, that doesn't systemically take away, for example, indigenous rights. Um, there are certain things that are forbidden for referenda topics, but otherwise it's as good as a law. Okay, so and um, is, is that something every ministry does or, or is the parliament doing it or is that f formalized for each and every law you are coming up with? Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, there is the referendum act and the referendum act is ratified by the parliament uh, and is enforced uh, by the central uh, election committee, the same uh, council that runs the same com commission that runs the national elections. Uh, and so it's overseen by an independent body, uh, including the debate and deliberations uh, before each referenda. And it takes uh, an alternating years. So one year we choose president and one year we do a national referenda and the other year next uh, we do a mayor uh, election and then the next year a national referenda. So the um, representative and the um, direct or uh, deliberative uh, take on alternating years. That's the Taiwanese system. Okay, cool. And, and I, I had a, a look at the tools you are using um, in your participatory processes. Is there from from your point of view, anything that is particularly important, um, that is mm -hmm. the key tool to, to start the process or to yeah, run, run process mm -hmm. like this? Well, um, I think the single most important tool uh, is to face-to-face -to -face communication. It's just people um, meeting um, and listening to what each other have to say. Um, everything else builds upon this deliberative uh, space. Um, and so our tools are uh, roughly speaking in two parts. One is about amplifying uh, the audience of a face-to-face -face meeting that includes live streaming, including co-presencing, including immersive um, video, including virtual reality, that's that's that synchronous uh, mode. And the other tool um, is about making two successive face-to-face -face meetings make sense to connect them so that one meeting can uh, work to crowdsource ideation uh, for the next face-to-face -face meeting to take as agenda. And so this um, discover and define process may, de may be done by asynchronous tools, and that includes, of course, polis and the petition system, the uh, presidential hackathon. There's a lot of systems that enable this kind of crowdsource agenda setting for the next face-to-face -face meeting to take place. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a process that interweaves online and offline issues um, to arrive at whatever the outcome is supposed to be. Yeah, because the idea is to we bring technology to the people. So for yeah. people, it's just a amplified town hall meeting and they're already, um, you know, having town hall meetings. It's just mm -hmm. their town hall meetings are becoming much more binding. Right. But we're not saying that you should take away those town hall meetings and move them online. We're not saying that. Mm -hmm. And is there a discussion about how representative these uh, processes are? So in the in the sense that only the educated or whoever participated mm -hmm. in other like uh, excluded, is that being discussed? Yes. Uh, so in Taiwan, we have uh, more than twenty national languages, 
And the National Language Act is designed so that people, for example, uh, just simple example, uh, who have a hard of hearing, uh, who have deafness, uh, there are um, interpreters that uh, translates the important announcements and informative material in real time. For example, during our uh, uh, epidemic uh, center command um, uh, live stream um, press conferences, uh, there's always a, a live interpreter that translates these into the Taiwanese sign language, which was one of the national languages. Um, and so uh, the idea of inclusion is not only uh, about a diversity of representatives, but rather making sure that everybody can represent their ideas in whatever modality that they prefer. And we rely on a combination of machine translation and human translators to make sure that it makes sense to everybody involved. Okay, um, here, here we have a discussion, um, particularly relating to online deliberations that only about one third of the population is, 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 is able to participate. Yeah? Um, do you compensate this by on, uh, offline formats like town hall meetings? Is there a broad participation of people in Taiwan? As I said, uh, what we are doing online is just the amplification of a face-to-face -face meeting, including live streaming and archival. Uh, because of that, uh, the uh, protagonist, the main character, is always the face-to-face -face meeting. Now, of course, because of coronavirus, the face-to-face -face may be through video conferencing, but still it's synchronous. And that's what counts. Uh, and uh, we're not saying that we're taking anything away from those town hall meetings. Okay, I see. So this, I mean, this is something you invented, or is this a Taiwanese tradition to do it that way? I think in Taiwan, uh, even before we have election for president, there is already a long tradition of community building, uh, okay. and the social sector and the civic sector uh, always um, meet over food, actually, uh, and music, uh, and uh, come on community deliberation. And, and there's a very long tradition of taking things to the community hunts instead of relying on the government to do it. So I would say that the civic sector or the social sector, there's many different ways to say this, uh, has a higher legitimacy than the public or the private sector from the 80s. So I didn't invent it because I was born in the 80s, right? I, <laughs> that I was just taking uh, what the community builders uh, wisdom and then amplifying it uh, through digital channels. Okay. Yeah, because this offline um, dimension of your system is not always that well seen abroad. Yeah, I, I heard first about the online issues. Mm -hmm. Well, this was working in mm -hmm. Taiwan. Mm -hmm. no. But surely you have seen the live streams, right? So these live streams uh, are what, what captures this uh, multi-stakeholder face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Okay, good. And I've seen you, you have a lot of um, open source software. Is, is that yeah. us? We strongly prefer open source software. Okay. Yeah. And you only use um, other software if there is no alternative. I mean, you prefer Skype, so I use Skype too. I, I'm insisting that we meet over Jitsi, <laughs> but if I had a choice, I would say, oh, let's meet over Jitsi. But uh, so I, I'm not religious about open source. I'm just saying that uh, if it's uh, open source, it's easier. If uh, we find that there's shortcoming in the software, it's easier for me to just go in and fix the problem instead of waiting for a vendor to do so. But if we uh, see a existing proprietary software, we still work with it. Uh, for example, Polis uh, used to be proprietary software, and we uh, use it so much that uh, the Polis, now a foundation, Mass and Democracy, see that it actually is more lucrative uh, to earn money through consultancy and through maintenance and through things like that instead of uh, through selling software licenses. So we gradually work with the vendor also to shift their revenue model so that they could uh, agree to the FRO GPL license or the GPL license at the end. Okay, yeah, that's a, an issue I'm contemplating at the moment too. Yeah? I haven't taken a final decision, but it is an issue to maybe change business models in our case too. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is it possible that I show you? Yeah, of course, feel free. You can just doing? start a screen share. Yeah. Okay, I would I would uh, share my screen. If that's okay. Of course, of course. Go ahead. Okay, I just did it. Um, basically, the, we we started from a slightly different process. Yeah, we started um, a process. The first process was to to elaborate the strategy. Yeah, so a text document. And that is something, the process here, you see that we did for the city of Vienna, and that is basically 
the background of what we are doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's a kind of innovation process where you start with collecting ideas. Mm -hmm. They are evaluated online. Um, that's like the police system, less advanced uh, because the um, the graphics are not there yet. Um, mm -hmm. then, Taking these ideas, we use experts, we use the community, we use the public sector to come up with a strategy mm -hmm. um, that are very complex issues, and that is then again uploaded and discussed online. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, there, there we use this this system. This is this Kuto. This is what you see here is basically um, the document uploaded, uh, and we discuss the arguments. Yeah, we think that they are contained in the paragraph, so people vote and comment on this. And then we try to find consensus, and um, we have developed this this part here. This is a consensus meter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that is uh, most of the time in line with the direct voting. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if this is highly negative, then this is also on the change um, mm -hmm. inside. But it can be different. Yeah. While this is negative, this is still green or undecided. And mm -hmm. this more or less takes into account how people vote across the document. So that you don't give in to those that are against almost everything in your document. Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So they get a, a low weight in this. And basically mm -hmm. the idea is then to, if you see that there are new comments, you change the paragraph, you update it, you come up with a new proposal and you start the process again, iterative, until mm -hmm. you have a solution. Mm -hmm. um, and the recent things we are doing is we, we are just um, um, clustering users. I mm -hmm. mean, that's that you do on polis as well, but mm -hmm. this on the documents, um, cluster users see if they are clusters, how they behave, what, what is important for them. So I don't have to explain this, I think, because you are actually because already doing exactly this. the same as the k-means clustering uh, that polis uses. Yeah. So so it's basically we use ideation, then the, um, document discussion tool, and if there is something undecided or where where we need to see where people are. We, we add um, survey questions or do a separate survey to see um, where the community is and what we favor. Yeah? Right, you uh, can drill it down to another focus group or things like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, and uh -huh. this obviously this is if if you combine this with uh, with offline events, mm -hmm. this is ideal. Yeah, that you take mm -hmm. things that are online discussed, put mm -hmm. it in offline sessions, then upload mm -hmm. again, whatever. Yeah. So this is, I think, very much in line with what you are doing already. Very much so, very much so. Yeah, you can just invite the people who proposed uh, ideas that most people resonate with or most controversial, depending, uh, to your physical meetings, and then we will have the same process. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, I mean, um, the main difference is here in Austria, and I think in Europe, I can say most of the time, is that the communities that take part are far smaller than what I hear from Taiwan. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's impressive that you have so many people there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, but that it's it's that it, it is that's it from my side. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, and thank you for making the introduction. And I mean, uh, we're not opposed to proprietary software. So if people inquire uh, for similar tools or things like that, I may point them uh, to, to your way. Uh, but of course, uh, for us to run it on the national level, uh, for example, the police consultations, the live streaming platform and so on, uh, we always run it on the on-premise uh, because of data uh, retainment uh, issues. I'm sure that you're part of the GDP. <laughs> you, you know uh, the requirements needed. Um, so, but I, I'm happy to um, encourage other people to try out the tool just to get a different feeling of how those the different upvote and downvote uh, feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be really nice. I would like to to do a little blog post on on our conversation and what is going on in Taiwan, if that's fine for yeah. you. Of yeah. course. And and if you're okay, we can just post this recording on YouTube. So you can just embed this conversation in, and YouTube will take care of doing the transcription. Yeah, okay, that's cool, yeah. That's fine for me. Um, and if you don't mind, I keep you posted on, on the, the things, and the next steps, and the maybe breakthroughs we are having here, yeah? Okay, very much yeah? so. Okay. Okay, so, take care. And have a good local time. Okay, yeah, thank yes. you. Bye-bye.